All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And I'm going to do a quick video. This one will be quick, I promise. <laughs> but this is about another material that a lot of people overlook uh, in the laser cutting arena. Uh, it's, it's very common. A lot of crafters use it, uh, especially some of the ones in my area. Uh, bakers use it. Different people who make uh, cupcakes, stuff like that, use it. And that's mylar. Uh, one of the reasons that I had the Monport M40 before was because I had a friend of mine who makes cakes and they, uh, you know, basically like have an air gun that they use to spray designs onto cupcakes and stuff like that. I had asked me about being able to use Mylar sheet with a laser and if I could cut out uh, templates or, you know, stencils for them to use in the business. And so that was one of the things that I did with the Monport. Well, now that the uh, P2 has stepped up and taken, the, taken its place, uh, I decided today to go ahead and get my settings dialed in on it while I was working with some other materials. And I uh, just want to kind of show you what is possible. And this could also be a market for you, possibly in your area, for people who like to do the sponge painting and other crafts or whatnot. There may be a market for cutting these things out and reselling them in your area and uh, help kind of offset some cost to your machine. So I'm going to show you what's possible with this stuff and just kind of go through the settings that I'm using in XCS and uh, that'll pretty much be it. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right. So first off, as I said before, guys, diode lasers do not cut this stuff Uh I could never get them to cut it. I'm not going to say you can't, but it is not worth the hassle. It is too much work. Uh, it basically will just cause this stuff to melt. So if you're trying to do this with a diode, save yourself the trouble and just uh, wait until you get yourself CO2. But I'm going to go down into XCS. So just to keep this thing simple, guys, remember not all fonts, not all images are going to make really good stencils. So the pieces have to be connected of whatever the stencil you're making. Uh, if not, they'll just fall loosely and uh, it won't be much of a stencil. So I'm gonna cut this thing out. The settings that I found that I like for this material is 65% power at 200 millimeters per second. And yes, that's a really fast cut. One of the things that you can do is when you type your text or whatever you're doing in, in the stencil, there are a couple of stencil type uh, fonts out there. Uh, one of the ones that I have used, one of them of course is just called stencil and the other one I think is called steamer. Uh, they both actually make really good stencils. Well, there we go, we have the stencil one. So if you were gonna do this text as a stencil, of course you're gonna wanna leave yourself enough on the sides to do the the uh, painting or whatnot. I need to fix this. There we go. That way we can put this in the center. All right, I'm gonna bring it up here in the center of the workspace, kind of get that thing to pop in place. Uh, click on the click on the text, and I'm also gonna want to run it a cut, and I'll go down here and select my 10 millimeter mylar setting, 65% power, 200 millimeters a second. And what this is going to do is this is going to create a stencil that we can use to, uh, you know, take a, a rattle can, can of spray paint. Uh, you can use sponge paints, whatever, however you want to put it on here. Uh, and you'd be able to put this on multiple items. So go ahead, hit the process button here. And uh, I'm going to run this. This won't take but just a second. All right. So that took just a couple of minutes. It didn't take very long. Uh, the text is very small. Most of the letters just fell out. Get that backwards. Most of the letters just fell out, but occasionally they will kind of hang and you have to tap them. Uh, one thing that I cheat with a lot of times is just use a little stick or something because that way you can just kind of bump them and get them to fall out of the holes. Some of the little tiny pieces will kind of get caught in there. Uh, but what you don't want to have to do is you don't want to fight with this stuff and have to be pulling on them. Uh, it will tear or rip pretty easy uh, if you have to do that. Uh, but once you get them all off and get them all out of there, you, you now have your stencil. And uh, 
Give me just a second and I'll go get a rattle can and a piece of uh, scrap wood, show you what it looks like. All right, so before we go over the results and everything, guys, real quick, there will be a link to the Mylar that I'm using down below. I got it on Amazon. It's not that expensive and uh, it's really thick, really durable. There we go. Now, <laughs> watch for overspray. This was just a quick little drop it in the box over here and spray it on. But you will want to make sure if you're going to be spraying a lot of the paint, make sure you cover up for overspray if it's anything too big. Uh, that's where a lot of times the sponge brushes actually come in really handy. Uh, one more trick that you may want to use. Uh, this wood didn't do it really bad, but the reason that it didn't is because this wood actually has a little bit of a coating on it already. Uh, a lot of times when using a stencil, it's always a good idea to go over it with, let's say, some clear coat first and then use the stencil. That'll keep you from getting a lot of that paint creep and bleed around the stencil. Uh, and you also don't want to go too thick. Go small coats, multiple coats if you need to. Uh, you can take and adhere uh, the stencil to the material with a little bit of brick green or blue painter's tape just to hold it in place. Light coats over and over with spray. And uh, But that was just a quick throw it together right there. So there you have it. How to make stencils with your laser. So one more project that you can make. And you can also make these to help out your fellow woodworkers or crafters in your area that don't have access to a laser. You can, get, you can buy a pack of Mylar cut them a bunch of different designs and they can use these on their products. And the reason I know this guys is before I got into laser engraving, I was ordering Mylar stencils online, different words, different phrases, Christmas logos, Christmas pictures. That was actually the reason I decided to get a laser was till I could engrave it instead of having to paint it. So it's kind of like a gateway drug, I guess, but <laughs> Mylar can be really, really handy if you don't have the setup to have a laser or a CNC or anything like that. And it gives you the ability to customize things. So uh, one more little trick to put in your hat there. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.